friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using a whole bunch of Lawn Fawn sets, including Penguin Party, Snow Cool, Berry Happy Holidays, Snowball Fight, Simply Celebrate Winter Critters, Simply Celebrate Critters, Simply Celebrate More Critters, and the Simply Celebrate Winter Critters add-on. Phew! Well, I have stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with the black parts of my penguins' bodies, and for those I'm going to use T3, T5, and T7. I like the toner grays because they are cool toned, which lend themselves to reading a bit more black, I feel like, but they also have just a little bit more warmth to them than just the plain cool grays. So I tend to like the toner grays quite a bit for animals that are supposed to look black, um, living creatures, you know, and then save the cool grays for inanimate objects. I prefer to color darkest to lightest, so I start with the T7 and lay in some shadows wherever I feel like they should go, mainly down the back side of their bodies or under anything that would be casting a shadow, such as a hat or the little earmuffs. Um, as their wing is kind of flipped out, I like to put a little shadow beneath that. And then I blend out with the T5, and then I'm using the T3, wherever I think a highlight should go. So the center of their foreheads, the top of their wings, the area closest to the belly of the body. So I'm starting with the two larger penguins, and then I'm going to do the row of penguins exactly the same. I know the row of penguins is a lot smaller, but I'm going to use them to create some depth and dimension in my scene by putting them a little bit higher on the card and adding some things in front of them. It's going to push them back, and so they'll read as though they are the same size penguins as the one in front. They'll just look further back in the scene. So I like kind of mixing things up and creating dimension with those kind of things rather than using tons and tons of foam tape. I like to use foam tape as well, but um, I try to keep that minimal just because it's a lot cheaper and easier to send a card through the mail if there's not multiple layers of it. So I am going to continue coloring in these little penguins. I think that this is the record for the most stamp sets that I've ever used on a single card. Although I will say that several of those stamp sets, especially the Simply Celebrate ones, other than the winter critters that had the penguins in it, were only for the sentiments that went up in the speech bubble. I love that there are so many sets that have those little sentiments in them now so that you can really customize those speech bubbles and make a unique message. So I'm moving on to the white parts of my penguin's body and rather going with more grays, I wanted to do something a little bit warmer. I just noticed that I missed a few of the little flippers of my penguin, so I'm gonna have to go back and do those. But for the white parts, I'm gonna use E000, E50, and E51 and just create a little bit more of a creamier tone and it'll look better as the Copics dry back a bit as well. It won't be so kind of yellow, um, but I just wanted to go a bit more creamy. I think it just adds a bit of life to your characters rather than just adding grays. So um, those are the colors I'm using and I am leaving quite a bit of white cardstock showing as well so that it doesn't get, you know, too much. I am going to go back to my T3, T5, and T7 to do the three little wings of my penguins that I somehow missed on the first round. Uh, I always get nervous when I have to color a lot of things the same. I feel like you guys are probably getting bored, and so I try to hurry, and that's how you make little mistakes and miss things, but anyway... I'm adding rosy cheeks to all of my penguins with RV10 and RV11. I add a little RV11 first and then blend out with the RV10. I added a little too much to the guy in the center, so I just fixed that with my colorless blender. And then I moved on to YR04 and YR07 for their beaks and their little feet. Just a touch of that YR07 first. 
and then blending out with the YR04. On their feet, I probably could have squeezed in a third shade, but I decided to just keep it simple since I only needed two for all of the rest of those areas. Then I'm gonna move on to tackling all of my ice, and I'm gonna use BG10, BG11, and BG13 for that. I'm only going to use a small amount of the BG13. It doesn't blend super well with the BG11, especially because my BG11 is running dry. Um, so I'm only adding a very small amount of that so that it'll be easier for me to kind of scrub out. But I wanted to have that little bit of extra depth in there to really make the scene look frosty. I'm also creating a nighttime scene, so I wanted my colors to be a bit more bold and vibrant than usual. I did a touch of that BG13, like I mentioned, down in the corners of each brick of the igloo and then also on the edges of the little ice circle that they're going to be fishing out of. And while I'm coloring this, I'm also going to be coloring the little um, ice blocks from the Snowball Fight stamp set that I set off to the side. I'll do that off screen because, again, it was just kind of more of the same and I didn't want you guys to get bored watching me color the same type of objects in the same exact tones over and over, but um, I'm blending out the BG11 with the BG10 and again leaving a little bit of white space on those blocks of the igloo to make them look like they're snowy, icy, you know, just have that frosty look. For the water inside my little ice fishing hole, I'm using BG32, BG45, and BG49. And this gives you a really nice deep turquoise blue that I just really liked. And then I'm going to also color in a few of the little accessory images. And I'm matching some Distress Oxide inks that I'm going to be using on this card in just a little bit. We're gonna be creating a Northern Lights card. And so I wanted to have some vibrant colors to kind of reflect the shades that I'll be using in the sky. So I did the center part of the hat on one of the little penguins and then the brim and pom-pom of another hat. And then I'm going to move on to some hot pinks. And I am using RV23, RV25, and RV29. I'm going to do the earmuffs on that first little guy over at the bottom left, and then I will also do more accessory images. I'm trying to make sure that each of those colors appears in at least two places on the card, and then the third place will be the Distress Oxide ink in the sky. I always follow that rule of three, trying to use things in three places, because um, I think it just gives you more visual impact that way. I'm moving on to some green tones with YG11, YG13, and YG17. And I'm going to do the center part of the hat on my second larger penguin, and then the scarf in the row of penguins. He's the only little guy wearing a scarf. And um, just coloring them both at once because it is such a small area to do, and that way I don't have to keep switching out the markers. And then I decided to do the handle of my fishing rod with just the darkest two shades because it was just a little narrow area. And then I'm going to bring in some purple tones. I'm using V05, V06, and V09, starting with the V09 for the shadows. And I'll do the brim and pom-pom on the hat of the second largest penguin. And then the center of the hat on the guy in the row at the end there. And then I'm going to move on to the door. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a wooden door or an ice block door, but I ended up deciding to do the wood. I just wanted to break up some of the ice in the scene since there will be quite a bit of it. So I used E53, E55, and E57 for that. That's one of my go-to combos for wood. I think it lends itself really well to that with the warm, rich tones. And then I decided to do like the extended part of the fishing rod. The name of it is escaping me. And I know my youngest son, if he were watching this video, would be yelling it at the screen. <laughs> but I can't think of it. But anyway, I decided to do that in wood. And then, like I mentioned earlier, with using the cool grays for inanimate objects, I'm going to use that for my bucket and also the crank of the 
fishing rod, so I use C0, C1, and C3 for that. And I did do a second layer on the bucket just to make it look even more shiny. It's rod and reel, right? I'm pretty sure that those are the correct terms. So anyway, moving on to my fish, I wanted them to look kind of like in a frosty tone because they are ice fishing. So I went with some blues, but not the blue greens, just to separate them out a bit from the ice. I used B000, B41, and B45. And I just put my darkest down at the bottom and the highlight at the top. I think that B000 really makes them look nice and, um, you know, not too dark, so. And then I'm switching to the BG000 and I'm going to just add a little bit of emphasis to the edges of the speech bubble. I just thought that that should have a little color on the scene as well. So I'm just going kind of between the areas and first I only did the bottom, but then I decided I wanted a touch of that at the top as well. So I just followed the drawn lines there. And that is going to finish up the coloring. So I'll bring in those ice blocks and I will trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I'm starting with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I trimmed down with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangle stackables from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to bring in the Distress Oxides to match the coloring, like I mentioned. The first shade that I'm using to match the green Copics that I used is Twisted Citron. And I'm going to add a little bit of that on either side. I'm only concentrating on the top of the card because the bottom's going to be covered up. The next color I'm bringing in is Peacock Feathers. And I'm going to run that into the Twisted Citron so that those colors can blend a bit and then um, just work back over between the two tools to make them a little bit softened into each other. Then I'll use the picked raspberry and add that right next to the peacock feathers. And the two colors kind of meeting up makes a little bit of a purple tone, which is nice. And then my final color is going to be a purple tone and I'm using wilted violet for that. And just adding that in in the space that was left. I did feel like the picked raspberry though got a little pushed back too much so I went back and added a bit more of that and now it's time to bring in the black soot which is going to transform all of these colors into a um, nighttime aurora borealis scene. So I'm bringing in the black soot on the edges and then down at the bottom as well. Um, because I'm going to have those speech bubbles running across the top, I don't want to cover up too much of those brighter colors because they're going to get covered up quite a bit anyway. So I'm just being careful to only blend a little bit over them to mute them down a bit and, you know, create that nighttime sky look. But like I said, I still want some of those pops of color to show through. So once I'm done adding in my black soot, I'm going to add quite a bit of water. I'm spritzing it onto an acrylic block because that gives me more control with the size droplets that I get. And then I'm picking that up with a thin paintbrush and splattering it all over the background. I'm going to let that react with those Distress Oxides for a few seconds and then blot it up with a paper towel. And then I will repeat that process again because I wanted even more of those little soft flecks in the background that indicate like some distant snow or stars. So once I'm done with that, I'm also going to add in some Gansai Tambi starry colors in this pearlized sheen. I like to really add a lot of layers to my nighttime sky scenes, especially like these northern light scenes, because I feel like it just really brings the whole thing together. You know, before you started adding all this stuff, it doesn't look that great. But by the time you get to the end, it looks really nice and vibrant and looks like a nighttime sky with those Aurora Borealis coming through. I'm also going to add some bright white flecks using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I am just taking a little bit and adding it to the cap because mine is a couple years old and so it gets a bit dried out, but it lasts forever. Uh, you only need such a small amount, but I'm mixing that up with some water in the cap to make it a bit more fluid and flicking that all over the background as well. And then once I am done with this, I'm going to set this panel aside to dry completely. 
And that usually takes about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to move on to my sentiment. I've trimmed down another piece of Spectrum Noir cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Simple Stitch Hillside Borders. And I'm stamping a sentiment using yet another Lawn Fawn Sam set. I'm stamping Let's Celebrate from the Holiday Party Animal set because I wanted a nice bold sentiment down at the bottom and I did that in peacock ink. And then I'm popping some Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock into my Misty. There was the stamp set that I used. And I'm going to take a little penguin holding the sign from the Penguin Party stamp set. And then into that sign, I'm going to add another little sentiment that says, Your Snow Cool. So I'll stamp that one down twice as well. So it's just as bold as the rest of the image. And then I can set that aside and work on my little brick wall, my ice brick wall. So I have cut out three of these little snowball uh, shields or forts, whatever they are, from the Snowball Fight stamp set. And I'm going to flip one of them upside down between the other two to make a row. And I decided to just tape those into place with a little bit of post-it tape because they were barely overlapping. So it was a little bit tricky to glue them together. So just using that post-it tape to kind of hold them in place from the back helped. And then I'm just checking that again with my hill to make sure that it's going to look how I want it. And then I'm going to just add a tiny little bit of glue to the spaces where they overlap. Um, but like I said, it was a lot easier to do it this way, having the tape hold it from the back, just because there wasn't a lot of area for that glue to grip a hold of. Then I'm going to take my Cutter B Teflon coated scissors and I'm going to cut off the top row of those bricks. And um, that is because the line of critters is too long for that top row. So they would kind of hang over the edges. So I'm going to take that snow drift with my sentiment at the bottom and glue that over the top of my background and just make sure that's on there straight. And then I will add some glue to the back of my little ice wall and tuck that down inside the hill. And it is going to be a little tiny bit too long. So I will take my cutter bee scissors once again and just trim off any excess that's hanging over the edges. Then I'll take my row of penguins and add some liquid glue to the back of them. And then before I adhere it, that's when I remembered that the tiny little bits that kind of extend out are a little bit too long for this hill when you put it together in this little strip of three. So I just trimmed down that as well and then lined up the black line that is underneath those critters with the top of the black line on those ice bricks. Then I'll take my row of speech bubbles and add that to the sky just above the penguins. So as I said earlier, I knew it was going to cover up a lot of that Aurora Borealis. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough of that color on there that you would see it both above and beneath those little speech bubbles. I'm going to glue this panel to my card front and make sure that it is lined up there nice and straight with the same amount of that mermaid cardstock showing on all four edges. And then I can start to arrange the rest of my images on this little scene. And I like to lay them out first because the glue that I'm using dries really quick. I love it, but it dries really quick. So I don't want to be moving things around, especially not on that bright white cardstock because I don't want to get any little smudges of glue or anything where they don't belong. And then I can start adhering these down and make it look like this little guy with the pink earmuffs is holding on to the fishing pole and having that extending down. And then I can glue the igloo back behind. And you can see how once that igloo is on there and then the larger penguins are down in front, it just really pushes that ice wall and that row of smaller penguins further back into the scene and makes them look like they are at a distance. And so it just adds a lot of depth. So 
I added in the little hole and then I'm gonna put a fish on the line dangling right above that. And then I'll put my bucket of fish over on the far right to kind of fill in some of that empty space. And then I've got two more little fish that I'm just gonna put over on the left hand side and try to create like a little stack there as if he's fishing one after another. And I really like that this is a general celebration card. It doesn't really specifically say what we're celebrating. It could be a birthday, it could be a promotion, it could be a new job, it could be anything you want it to be. And especially at this time of the year when my stash is really depleted of cards, I like to create more of a general kind of card to have for those occasions that pop up, you know, unexpectedly and you need a quick card and maybe don't have time to just make a whole new one specifically for the occasion that has come up. So just having a general celebration card in your stash can really help you out in those kinds of situations. I added the same blues that I'd used to for my ice to the top of my snow and got a little bit on my penguin. I tried to fix that with the colorless blender, but it wasn't really bleaching out quick enough for me. So I used a white gel pen and that works always really well too. So if you can't get it with the colorless blender, white gel pen is usually your best friend. And then of course I had to add a bit of glitter. So I used that on all of my little snow bricks that made up the wall and the igloo, and um, I'm also gonna put it on the top edge of the snow that is making up the whole bottom of my scene, and on the rim of my little hole in the ice. It's an icy winter scene. It makes sense that there would be some sparkle. And I also did add it to all of my fish for like little fish scales. And that is going to finish up this Northern Lights card. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this technique. I'm gonna lift that up to the camera so you can see it in a little more detail and also catch some of that sparkle. And I'll give you another peek at the inside. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear your opinions. Make sure that you're subscribed if you haven't already and have your notifications turned on if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products that I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep on watching, here are two extra videos that I thought you might also be interested in. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one and I'm wishing you all a very happy and crafty new year. Bye-bye.